This is a fire prevention week and a local fire department has a list of things that it wants your family to do tonight before you go to bed. To walk us through that checklist, Mark Flatter joins us. He is the chief medical officer with Florissant Valley, uh, Florissant Valley Fire Protection District. Excuse me, Mark, we're going to talk more about that smoke detector in just a minute, but first, as a mom, I have to admit, I want to keep our bedroom doors open at night because I want to hear every peep that might come from the kids' bedroom. But you told me that is a big no. Why is that? Well, the bedroom door acts like a barrier between the bedroom and the rest of the house. If there's a fire in the house, the door provides a, a shield for the occupants from flames, keeps the smoke from getting into the bedroom, keeps the carbon monoxide level from increasing, thereby making the uh, living space more survivable. It also reduces the heat as well by up to seven or 800 degrees between the outside of the door and the inside of the bedroom, giving the occupants a chance to escape or firefighters a chance to get to them and rescue them. Okay, that's a huge difference. So bedroom doors all the way shut tonight. Now, the yes. other thing that you want us to do before we go to bed is for our families to make a checklist, right? What should that entail in case of an emergency? You want to have at least two ways out of the home in case your primary exit is blocked by smoke, fire, you want to have a secondary exit. So you want to be able to get to that secondary exit. You want to practice getting out of the house using both exits. And you also want to have a meeting place outside of the home for all the family to uh, to meet so that we know they know that uh, everyone is accounted for. What about for families with young kids? Anything specific they especially need to keep in mind? Also, want, they want to keep in mind that kids, especially younger kids, um, will sometimes run and hide when they're scared or they feel like they're in trouble. Uh, we had an unfortunate, very unfortunate event in August where a young child was in a house fire, uh, went and hid in his hiding place and unfortunately succumbed to smoke inhalation and died on the way to the hospital. So you want to make sure that if your child does have a hiding place, you know where it is, uh, but you also want to impart on them that they don't need to be scared, that they need to get out of the house. Yeah. That's so hard to hear, but I guess it's hard to know how your child's going to react to a smoke detector going off because sometimes they could sleep through it and then other times it might scare them. So Correct. do you need to play it for them ahead of time to, to show them this is what it's going to sound like? A good idea would be when you do your annual or semi-annual smoke detector test when you change the batteries, just kind of have your child there so they know what the smoke detector sounds like in a normal setting so okay. that if they do hear it, uh, it's not alarming to them and they don't panic in addition to what else may be happening, causing the smoke detector to go off. Okay, you brought one with you today. Show us what we need to look for when doing our check. Sure, you want to make sure uh, that you change the battery. So you want to make sure that you remove the battery, change the battery every six months. When you change your clocks, change your batteries. That's the, uh, the motto that we have. Um, also, you want to keep in mind that smoke detectors do have a, a life expectancy. So on the back, there is a date, and that is the date of manufacture. So 10 years is the recommended life of a smoke detector for most manufacturers. So if your smoke detector was manufactured before October 10th of 2012, it probably needs to be replaced. All right, that time's coming up, so maybe add it to the calendar. Yes. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today and for those tips that You're we welcome. can put into place tonight. We really appreciate that.